Hey, hey, students. In this group, we're going to be going over two examples on finite limits uh, involving piecewise defined functions. So let's go ahead and write down the instruction for the examples we're going to be working on. So the instructions are as follows. For the specified or the specified value of A, find the left, right, and double-sided limits. Okay? Left, right, and double-sided limits. Alright, so question one. What if we have A equals 3, but if piecewise defined function f of x equals 3x plus 2 for x less than 3 and um, 4x minus 1 for x greater than 3. Okay? Alright, so let's go ahead and uh, find the left and the right hand limits. So just to help you get our orientation of these two functions, I'm going to put them on a number line. We don't have to graph these functions at all. We can just use a number line to understand what's going on. So uh, this is the barrier point right here, 3. So to the left of it, we have 3x plus 2. So when you're approaching 3 uh, from the left, this is the function you're going to be using. And then uh, when you're approaching 3 from the right, this is the function that comes into play, 4x minus 1. Approaching 3 from the right, 3 from the right, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and find the left-hand limit first. Left-hand limit. Let's so call left-hand. All right, so the left-hand uh, limit is going to be the limit as x approaches 3 from the left of the function. We just involve the substituting 3 from the left into the function on the left side of 3, which is 3x plus 2. Okay, so 3 times 3 from the left plus 2. We're not dividing this number by anything, so it looks good. So this is going to be 9 plus 2, which equals 11. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and find uh, the right-hand limit. Right-hand. So in this case, we're going to be looking for the limit as x approaches 3 from the right of the function, which equals 4 times 3 from the right minus 1. Because the function to the right of 3 is 4x minus 1. So when we work that out, we're going to get 12 minus 1, which equals 11. All right. Okay, so what's the double-sided limit? The double-sided limit. Now, uh, the double side limit, limit is simply going to be, um, let's see, it's simply going to be 11. Okay, so let's go ahead and write that down. So the double sided limit is written as a limit as x approaches 3 of the function equals 11. How do we know that? Well, since the left hand limit, limit as x approaches 3 from the left of the function is equal to the right hand limit they both actually equal to 11 okay since the left and right hand limits are equal to 11 then the double sided limit is also equal to 11 all right so there goes our answers the left the right and the double sided limits all right let's go ahead and take a look at question number two. So question two, what if we have a equals two for the piecewise defined function given by f of x equals um, one over the absolute value of x minus two for x less than two and um, x squared minus four over x minus 2 for x greater than or equal to 2. Okay? All right, so let's orient these two functions on our number line. So let's say we have the number line. 
So, uh, and then the point, the breaking point is at two. So to the left of this, Excluding two, the function in play is one over the absolute value of x minus two. Okay, and then to the right, including two, the function in play is um, x squared minus four over x minus two. Okay, so the left hand limits when you're approaching two from the left, this is the function you're looking at, and then when you're approaching two from the right. Uh, this is the function that you're looking at, all right? Okay, so let's go ahead and evaluate the left and right-hand limits. So let's do the left-hand first. So left-hand. All right, so left-hand limit is the limit as x approaches 2 from the left um, of the function, which is basically going to be the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of the function on the left side of the interval which is 1 over absolute value of x minus 2. Since we're on the left side, we're going to take the um, negative piece of this absolute value function. Okay, so it's going to be 1 over, let's put the limit back, limit as x approaches 2 from the left of negative x minus 2. Okay? All right, so we're going to go, go ahead and plug in uh, 2 from the left. So we're going to have negative 1 over 2 from the left minus 2 and then now uh, when you subtract that you're going to get um, it's going to become negative 1 over 0 from the left infinitely large negative number this equals negative 1 over uh, 0 from the left is the same thing as negative 1 over infinity and then um, you multiply the numerator by the reciprocal of the denominator. Your final answer is going to be infinity. All right, so that is your left-hand limit. All right, let's go ahead and look for our right-hand limit. So for right-hand limits, we have the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of the function. Since we're approaching the uh, value from the right, we're going to look at this function right now, x squared minus 4 over x over 2, so it's equal to the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared minus 4 over x minus 2, okay? So we're going to factor the numerator and reduce. So factor the numerator, we're going to have x minus 2 times x plus 2. You see why we're factoring the, um, the numerator, because if we just plug in 2 directly, we're going to have 0 in the denominator, which results in an undefined expression, okay? x minus 2. So you can see that that discontinuity is removable, so let's go ahead and remove it. Now what we're going to do is uh, go ahead and plug in the 2 from the right. So this is going to become 2 from the right plus 2, and the limit is simply 4, okay? So that goes the number that you're approaching. Now what about the double-sided limit, double-sided? Well, the double-sided limit, which is the limit as x approaches 2 of the function, does not exist because since the left and the right-hand limits are not a difference, so the limit as x approaches 2 from the left is not equal to the limit as x approaches 2 from the right. All right, since you're different, that means that the double-sided limit does not exist, all right? So there, there. Whatever, if we had a equals four, for the piecewise defined function f of x equals um, one over x squared minus 16, for x is less than four, let's make it less than or equal to, and x is and sign x minus 4 over x minus 4, where x is greater than 4. Okay? All right, so we, it's obvious we can see which functions um, is to the left and to the right of 4. So if the boundary point is 4, to the uh, left of 4, including 4, this is what we have. 
um, we have 1 over x squared minus 16. And then to the right of 4, we have um, sine x minus 4 over x minus 4. So this is going to be sine x minus 4 over x minus 4. Okay? This is for x approaching 4 from the left. And this side is um, x approaching 4, you're approaching 4 from the right. All right, so there you have it. All right, let's start out by computing the left-hand limit. So the left hand. Left-hand limit is basically the limit as uh, x approaches 4 from the left of the function. And the function in play is the function on top, which is uh, 1 over x squared minus 14. So we're going to compute the limit as x approaches 4 from the left of 1 over x squared minus 14, minus 16. All right. To do this accurately, we're going to have to um, simplify the denominator. Okay. Basically, I mean factor. Factor is the denominator. Okay. So let's go ahead and factor that. So this becomes the limit as x approaches 4 from the left of um, 1 over x minus 4 times x plus 4. All right, and um, that becomes that becomes so now we can plug in negative 4. So we're going to have Uh, this is going to become 1 over 4 from the left minus 4 times uh, 4 from the left plus 4. Uh, that becomes 1 over 4 from the left minus 4 is uh, 0 from the left times uh, 4 minus 4 plus 4 is uh, 8. So we can rewrite this as um, 1 over 8 times uh, 0 from the left is the same thing as negative 1 over infinity. So we can multiply 1 over 8 by the reciprocal. Ooh. 1 over 8 by the reciprocal of the denominator. So uh, we're going to have 1 over 8 times negative infinity over 1. All right? And then when you multiply across, your final answer is going to be, actually not the final answer, negative infinity over 8 which equals negative infinity. All right, so there goes your left-handed limit. All right, let's go ahead and find the right-hand limit. Right hand, right hand, and that's uh, the limit uh, as x approaches 4 from the right of the function. And the function to the right of that boundary point is um, sine x minus 4 over x minus 4. Okay, so let's go ahead. So this becomes the limit as x approaches 4 from the right of sine x minus 4 over x minus 4. Okay, so we're going to have to use the sandwich theorem here. So to do that, we're going to make a substitution. Okay, so we're going to say um, that we're going to let u equals x minus 4. Okay? So e is going to equal x minus 4. So we can rewrite this limit. Um, it's going to become the limit as u approaches a certain value of sine u over u. Okay? Alright, so uh, what is u approaching? We know that u is x minus 4, right? So x is approaching 4 from the right, so we can plug that into here. So u is going to be approaching 4 from the right minus 4. Okay, so u is basically going to be approaching 0 from the right. Okay, so this limit using u substitution can be written as limit as u is approaching 0 from the right or sign u over u. And we can simply use the sandwich theorem here to conclude that this limit equals 1. 
All right, so since this limit equal to 1, this is exactly the same as saying that the limit as x approaches 4 from the right of sine x minus 4 over x minus 4 equals 1. Okay? So there you have it. Now, what about our double-sided limit? Uh, double-sided limit. Um, let's see. Double-sided. Well, the left-hand and right-hand limits were different, right? One was 1, the other was negative infinity. So our conclusion is simply that the limit um, as x approaches 4 of the function does not exist since or because since the left-hand limit, limit as x approaches 4 from the left of the function was negative infinity, which is different from the right-hand limit as x approaches 4 from the right of the function, which is 1, okay? Since the left and the right-hand limits are different, then the double-sided limit does not exist. All right, so there you have it. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Um, also post the comments to let me know what you think about this presentation. You can like and share um, within any social networking program that you use. More clips can be found on microsoft.com. Thanks again for watching, or you can scan this QR code. Uh, have a wonderful day.